this quantum initiative, this Q, is to try and take quantum science out of the traditional school of physics into all departments and faculties across the university. Ultimately, we hope to see quantum science transition to quantum technology. That means evolving from basic physics of quantum mechanics to economists using quantum computers. Quantum technologies are technologies of the future and I think it's important that leading institutions on the African continent like VETS get involved in its early stage and have the advantage of the first mover. We have a national quantum strategy that we are driving from VITS. And the second is more inward looking, VITS Q, to get academics involved in this quantum future. What we want to do is train a future quantum workforce and to have a quantum economy waiting to employ them. Quantum imaging is an alternative imaging technique where we employ the phenomenon of quantum entanglement to image an object. You can point your camera somewhere else, but by virtue of quantum entanglement, you can have one photon interacting with the object, the other photon going to your camera, and by detecting these photons in coincidence, you can reconstruct an image. Incorporating artificial intelligence and machine learning has sped up this process tenfold. So we've reduced image acquisition time from what would previously take maybe six hours to an hour. Including artificial intelligence gives us the ability to increase the resolution and to resolve beyond what's capable in the lab. So we can see things at a better resolution, at a better quality. What we'd like to see is, can we image light-sensitive biological matter? Can we have an impact on diagnosis? Can we have a medical impact? Can we have a biological impact? Within the Structured Light Laboratory, we have a strong focus on quantum communication. The idea is to link two parties together in a way that is fundamentally secure. Around the late 1980s, a physicist Peter Shaw predicted that through the application of quantum physics, one will be able to de-encrypt your account number and even all the defense codes that are used. So therefore, quantum encryption will be the ultimate safety standard of current encryptions, as we know. The way we achieve the quantum security is to harness entanglement. Entanglement in the world of light means that two particles of light can be connected. And we exploit that connection so that we can encode information on one and transfer the other particle to someone in a way that they could only retrieve the message if this entanglement remains intact. And because the measuring one affects the other, we can tell if there's an eavesdropper. Traditionally, experiments with entanglement have been done with a two-letter alphabet. We use the patterns of lights to have an infinitely large alphabet. And if you have a very, very large alphabet, you can have a lot of information capacity in each photon, which means we can do this communication faster and with better security. The work that VidsQ is focusing on is to build a community of quantum computing researchers. So people across diverse fields, ranging from health, chemistry, material sciences, will be preparing themselves to use quantum computers to tackle problems in those fields. We're mainly focusing at looking into using quantum computing in the African context. So how do we solve the problem of diseases? How do we come up with new vaccines? Also, climate change is becoming a big problem and a lot of research in climate change requires doing computations, modeling the atmosphere. VETS is one of 14 or 15 labs across the world that have partnered with a major a multinational, IBM, which has been a company that has been at the forefront of the development of quantum computers. We are able to gain access to quantum computers which are stationed in other parts of the world. In the four years that we've been in partnership with WITS, we've collaborated in terms of meetups and on the research front itself, we've collaborated in terms of quantum chemistry as well as quantum topological data analysis. And we're continuing to forge stronger interest in terms of what do we do next when it comes to quantum computing, specifically for WITS, for South Africa and for the African continent. It's a future of computing in a way you've never imagined. 
a future of new technologies brought about by quantum communications, quantum teleportation, and potential new technologies and new professions that are currently being created. Going forward, we would hope to continue to make scientific advances that make an international splash, put South Africa back on the map again and make people aware that we're doing cool science down south. But we also want to see quantum technology. We want to see real products that can make a difference, create new economies. We want our students to be employed locally, doing quantum technology as a career. And so our hope is to see that this new second revolution in the quantum world can really make an impact locally here in South Africa.